okay, what I want to do, I want to test your faith and the foundation of your faith. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And on the basis of your answer, we will know whether your faith is on the right premise or on the right foundation. And if your faith is on the right foundation, it will be effective. You will see that your faith will have sufficient efficacy to move mountains, to subdue kingdoms, overcome challenges, resist the devil, and a lot of other supernatural manifestations will be the outcome of one whose faith is on the right foundation and the right premise. Faith is not a difficult thing. You don't labor to exercise faith. In fact, let me tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said, if your faith is even as teeny little bit like a mustard seed, it has the efficacy to move mountains. So why is it that we seem to like struggle to have faith? I'm believing God. Brethren, I'm believing God. Brethren, join me to believe. Why do we use such languages? When faith is the easiest thing, is the easiest. In fact, it's like breathing, you know, how you're taking a breath. It's so easy to take a breath. I'm, I'm not saying if you don't have any issues with your lungs. But breathing is so easy, it's so natural, it's so effortless, it's so almost, you you breathe subconsciously. And that's how faith should be for a believer. But some people are finding it very difficult to exercise their faith. So let me tell you why. Your faith will lack efficacy. Your faith will be burdensome to you if the premise is wrong. So let me ask you a couple of questions. Number one, we know that he who is favored of God experiences mighty blessings. He who is loved of God experiences the manifestation of God's love, which is in his goodness, in his glory, in his blessings and all that. So let me ask you one question. What will make me anticipate and expect the favor of God, the mighty favor of God, as far as it pertains to certain aspects of my life? You know, some people, when you see some favored people or when you see some people making some outstanding progress or success in a particular aspect of their lives ah that sister is highly favored that sister is is blessed that sister is loved of god some people will say that brother is lucky but you know in the christian circle we don't accept that word of lucky some people say that person is fortunate but actually the real description of a successful blessed person is to say that that person is experiencing the great favors of God. That person is highly favored. Now, I want to ask you a question. What will make you anticipate and expect the favor of God? Why are you expecting the great favor of God on any matter? Or why will you expect God's favor? Number one, is it because you have paid your tithes, paid your offerings, or given a big sowed a big seed in church, or sowed a big seed into a ministry, or sowed a big seed into a pastor's life? Is it because of that? Uh, un 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 unconsciously, deep inside in your heart, you are expecting the favor of God because you have given a great seed to the Lord your God. Consciously, because you've paid your tithe, because you've sowed a great offering, a big offering, so you're anticipating that on that basis, the favor of God will be shown to you on a specific matter that you are expecting a result or something. That's one. Two, are you anticipating that God favors you because you have done extensive praying and in praying, you have added three days of fasting to your praying and on the basis of your praying and on the basis of your fasting you would experience more of the favor of God on that matter. Number three are you expecting that hmm God loves me because I have obeyed his commandments I have not walked disorderly I have not act done like the sinners, those people that sin, that drunkards, drug abusers, adulterers, 
and all that i'm not in that category i have kept myself i have been diligent in obeying his commandments within my uh, ability to the best of my knowledge and on the on that basis subconsciously i am anticipating that i will experience god's love That is one set of questions. Or are you anticipating the favor of God, the mighty, awesome, unprecedented favor of God on your life and specifically on the issue for which you are expecting victory, breakthrough, or provision? Because you know that the person who has the highest favor before God is Christ and that because you believe in Christ every favor that Christ has before God you can appropriate it are you trusting a lot in Christ Jesus believing in him recognizing that he loved you gave his life for you and you are meditating on his love for you you are just you know proclaiming ah Jesus really loves me. You are worshipping Jesus Christ because you recognize that he's your substitute. Because you recognize that you are inside of him. You have been baptized into him. You put on Christ Jesus. And you know that you are entitled to every favor that Christ enjoys before the throne of grace. You know you're entitled to it. And you leverage that favor of Christ as your premise and your basis in anticipating and expecting the favor of God on your life. In other words, you just feel in your heart, I'm entitled to the maximum favor of God. I believe and I know that Christ loves me and my the favor I have before God is on the premise of the favor that Christ has before God. That's one. Two, do you believe that Jesus is the object of God's greatest love whereby God said this is my beloved son in whom I well pleased whereby Christ himself affirmed it and he said the father loveth the son and has put all things into his custody in other words the father loves the son and has made the son to be heir of all things Jesus also said the father loveth the son and showeth him all things there nothing is hid from him wisdom knowledge understanding all resources nothing is hid from him nothing is withheld from him and because you know that god loves his son and that you are in his son therefore you also an object of the love of god because you are in the beloved son you are in christ and every love that the son enjoys you enjoy it and then you are meditating on it you are meditating on how much love of the father the son enjoys and you recognize that you are also a son and on that basis you are entitled to the love of the father and it's on that premise that you are anticipating his blessings his response to your prayers where, where do you belong the first category or the second category let me explain to us the truth of the matter is why will i work for god my working for god my determination to make sure that my life is in line with his will and his commandments and his instructions i'm not doing it listen to me they say fine gray line here i'm not doing it because i'm trying to curry favor from god i'm not doing it because i'm trying to please a god who is seated on his throne and is looking for people that please him i'm not doing it because of that i'm not doing it because i want to for want of a better word earn his love i want to like work for his love for me to increase for him to love me more 
no 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 you see the problem is that that's a warped um perspective or understanding of god and his nature and his attributes if you read what the bible says the bible says god is love the bible says god so loved the world the bible says why you were an enemy god demonstrated his love to you in that he still died for you why you were an enemy you're not even uttered the prayer you're not even tried to make made any reconciliatory moves towards him so it's just the nature of god it is out of his life. he got to love the world in other words he didn't just love you he loved you in a radical extraordinary way whereby he was prepared listen to this church he was prepared whatever it cost him to show his love for you to reach out unto you and so the thing is this eh? the love of god is his nature you cannot manipulate it you cannot alter it you can't you don't control it it's just his nature so his love is just there he loves you because that is his nature he loves you not because you earn it or you deserve it or you merit it he just loves you because it is his nature and you can't do anything to alter it he love you whether you please him or you don't please him that's one two stop trying to please him or to pacify him or to um, appease him with your works no 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 if anything listen to me church body who believes in christ jesus listen to what the bible says the bible says that this jesus christ he's the propitiation of your sins propitiation means he is the one who has been offered who has suffered and offered as a sacrifice as an offering to god without spot without blemish so as to pacify the displeasure the fury the indignation and the wrath of god against any possible sin in this world including yours but you can appropriate that propitiation and pacification and appeasement by you trusting in that redemptive work that propitiatory work of christ that um, uh, uh, sacrificial work of christ whereby all the anger of god was discharged in the body of his son in other words god unleashed his wrath his indignation his fiery indignation in the body of his son and by that god's entire displeasure against sin was pacified was appeased am i making sense was propitiated so what it means here is that god is already pleased with you you're not trying to please him you're not trying to pacify his wrath he's not angry with you and will never be angry with you his wrath has been appeased long ago two thousand years ago and anyone who believes in christ as the lamb that taketh away the sins of god guess what god is already pleased with you. that's why the bible says you are already accepted you are accepted you are favored um, god is already pleased with you he says you are already accepted in the beloved in other words because you are in the beloved son of god don't try to be accepted don't try to please him so when you approach him with any desire the word accepted actually is you are favored it's favorably disposed to you you are entitled already to his favor because his favor is disposed to you why because you are in the beloved because the more consciousness i have that i am in christ and that christ is the object of god's greatest delights and as a result i am also an object of god's greatest delight the more you have the consciousness of that let me tell you the more effective your faith will become you will have more faith than he that does a lot of works he that labors in fastings and prayings he that is unconsciously relying on when i say unconsciously you're not going to go as well father i did this but like no but in your mind 
subconsciously and unwittingly you are leveraging or depending or relying on your works as your resume or your silent cv in receiving favor from heaven answers to prayers um, um breakthroughs from heaven victories from heaven no 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 drunk change it let me give you another perspective so you don't think that this is just out of the ordinary listen obeying god paying your tithes giving offerings yielding yourself as an instrument in God's hand, working hard for God, laboring for Him, and all that. You know why you do that? You are doing that never because you are trying to please God. You are trying to obtain favor from God. You are trying to get Him to answer your prayers. You are trying to get His attention. No, no, never do that. You do that. All this I've mentioned, they're very good to do. But do that because, wow. Father, in appreciation of your unconditional love, in appreciation of your great favor over me, for making me the highly favored one of God, in appreciation, I do all these works for you. I do anything I can do that is available for me to do. I do anything that you ask me to do. I do it because I know it is an expression of gratitude. It is an expression of my faith in your faithfulness. Am I making sense? So today, you try it out. I want you to begin to believe God. You will see that even though your faith is as minute, honestly speaking, that challenge in your life, that thing that has been on for one week, one month, one year, one decade, for, that's been on protectedly in your life. You don't know what to do about it. Maybe you are not exercising faith on the wrong on the right foundation because if you do that you are going to have an efficacy that is sufficient to move mountains and i hope you know what a mountain is do you think your problem is as big as a mountain it's not as big as a mountain so it doesn't matter what the premise of that problem is in fact if it's a health challenge and doctors say it is incurable and there are many diagnoses like that where they tell you you know what we can't cure this you have to live with this all the days of your life and you accept that report what happened to your faith your faith is an instrument by which you are meant to live a triumphant overcoming life you know what <laughs> you know what the bible says let me tell you something. the bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith if there's a problem with that major instrument to live victoriously in this life let me tell you you're going to be frustrated you're going to be you're going to live a defeatist life you're going to constantly experience life of a victim or not a victor because that major means or instrument or that thing that god has given to you by which you overcome the world it's it's not effective it needs to be repaired is that making sense some of us when your car is not functioning well you send it to the mechanic and the mechanic is meant to tell you what's wrong with your car why is your engine not firing well what's the problem do you need to change something in your engine and until you do carry out the repair just like my car now my car showed me one kind of sign and that sign means it is time for service if I don't service this guy, it will start functioning. It will, the sufficiency will just diminish. Listen to me. Your faith needs to be diagnosed. And I've given you what I consider a premise for you to review the premise for your faith. And you can, you know, switch your mindset and get your faith to operate at the highest level of efficacy. You, I guarantee you, before the end of this month, you will see spectacular breakthroughs and you'll be wondering wait, 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 wait. is it that easy something i've prayed i have fasted i have gone to men of god to pray for me men of god have laid hands upon me this problem has been there whereas the solution 
is right with you sort out your faith you will be amazed that just like jesus christ said you say to this mountain oh ye mountain before robert be removed and be cast into the sea and the mountain will obey you so any problem you speak to the problem say this problem you cease to be a problem this issue you cease to be a problem in fact from today you become instead of a problem and a prayer point you become a praise point god bless yeah